me give you a quick scene breakdown. We're gonna look at how I use Pinterest, how I use Pure Ref, and then finally how I set up my viewport in Blender. Just to give you guys an update on what we're starting to make here. I mean, we've been going at it for a couple weeks now. There's maybe like three weeks of the VODs on uh, the Patreon account. But uh, yeah, let's um, let's look at the uh, let's look at what we have here. So we've got our PRF file, which uh, I'll talk about later in the video. And then we've got the scene. The idea behind the scene is to make a kind of like cyberpunk esque theme. Uh, you can see there's this building here or this this entryway. This is going to be like the club entrance to the empire. So the the theme is cyberpunk. The story is more about a, a club that is inspired by the lore of the community that we've built, right? So this is in the future. Uh, we've got this underground club in a, the back back alley is the grimy, grimy back entrance with the, we'll have bots, bodyguard type bots that are protecting the entrance um, and just making sure that the right people are coming in. Uh, yeah, so... I've learned a decent amount about Blender over maybe like the last eight or nine months. Uh, I use it professionally now at work. Um, and now when I started creating this scene, it was like, okay, what do I want to make? And I really want to kind of dive into Eevee and also cycles. So this scene will be completely in Blender. Uh, it will most likely be mostly Eevee. And then near the end, we'll probably start getting some really nice renders and or animations that are within cycles. The hope is we can take those renders and then maybe use those as our like splash screens for the stream and, and when you're waiting for the stream to start. Uh, but yeah, with that, with that said, I just kind of started blocking stuff out. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on how I'm instancing things in, from other Blender files. So stay tuned for that. And... Um, yeah, how I got to where I'm at now with this is I basically just started taking boxes and uh, uh, let's go let's toggle the overlays. I started taking boxes and just beveling them and kind of positioning them in where I think they might look best. And then, for example, this building here is the collection of a couple boxes. And then once I once I kind of had this design in the back for this kind of back alley space. It's like, okay, well, what do I want to do with the, this length of the building? Right. And it's like cutting, cutting those shapes in and figuring out where, uh, where doorways can go and the scale of everything. And yeah, so it's, it's just been slowly getting there. And this is just kind of an update video to let you guys know where the, uh, where the scenes at. So Pinterest is basically a collection of images that people are, putting together based on like their, what they're trying to gather. So for example, uh, if we scroll through here, let's find, uh, let's find something. So like this one, the cyberpunk art, this is coming from a Tumblr page. So if I click that, you can go to the link that it is referenced from. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see more images that are like it, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, if you click to the side, it'll exit or minimize and go back to the original page you're on, which can be a little jarring sometimes. Uh, you'll see when you mouse above above them, you'll get like a suggested uh, board that it needs to go to or that it, it thinks it should go to. If you hit save, it'll immediately go to that board. So what are boards? So that's the second point here. Boards are, if I go to my profile up here, Boards are the main, like, think of it like as a group of collection, uh, a grouped collection of, of content. Uh, so if I click this one, stream future reference, this is any images that I've pinned to this board that I think uh, represent what we're doing on the stream right now, right, with the art we're creating. I actually pinned this one this morning. So if you click this, you can see... Uh, the image here, and if you scroll down again, you'll get more more references on that, uh, or things that are similar. So this is great for digging through and finding tons and tons of inspiration and reference for specific things. Um, next, uh, I mean, we cover gathering references, shape scanning. So 
Shape scanning is pretty cool. So if I've got this image, let's see if it, maybe there's a better image to do this with. Let's, let's try this one. So you've got this image. You've got this little button down here. Click this guy. And uh, you can see right off the bat, it's trying to give you images that look like this. But you can narrow it down to specific things. Like, for example, you can see it's trying to, it's trying to grab and understand what you're looking at and find things that are similar to it. It can be a hit or miss, but it can uh, it can be really useful in in some cases. So keep keep uh, try that out whenever whenever you think um, think it might be useful. Yeah, it's the, I, it's Pinterest is awesome. I find it just full of inspiration. Um, so when you hit home you get your feed. This feed is directly controlled by things you've clicked on before, things that are pinned in your pages or in your uh, boards. If you click the little arrow thing here, you can tune your home feed. So if you click that, you can see a search history, topics that I've poked at, and anything that I don't want to reference back to, I can just uncheck it and then it will be excluded this will be excluded from searching to fill that, that feed page. So if I go back to home, this has now technically been adjusted accordingly. Oh, this one's cool. See, it's assuming that it's stream future reference. Just quick glance looking at it looks cool. So I just hit save and it's immediately on that, on that board. So it's really, really nice. Uh, the last thing I wanted to cover was following. So if you go here, following basically is uh, a culmination it's just like your home page, your, your home, uh, your home feed, but it's a feed based off of the people you follow. So like if I hit edit here, you can see like Warren is in here. He was last active three years ago. So he's, he's definitely probably not using this as much as he used to. Uh, you can see I'm also following Filipino dish pages. Mm, delicious. Anyways. So that's, uh, I would say that's, the basics of it, that's uh, that's Pinterest. So you've got Blender here. You've got this window here, which is Pure Ref, and then my webcam, of course. Uh, Pure Ref, I have, if you press Control-Shift-A, it's always on top or not on top. You can just toggle that on and off with Control-Shift-A. I usually keep it on top of the viewport so that I can move this around and, and make sense out of like whatever I'm trying to look at while keeping the reference in uh, in the view. Uh, in the description below, I'm going to make sure to link the pure ref default hotkeys because there's, there's a pretty good amount of them. You can do some pretty crazy things in it. Um, let's, uh, let's scale this up and we'll just start looking at this and I'll bring up Pinterest as well. So if we've got Pinterest here, right? Um, let's bring this over here. So we'll go to my profile and we'll go to the the stream future references. This is all the references that I'm pulling, pulling over for uh, bringing into my pure ref. So I keep my pure ref pretty simple. The main reason I wanted to record this is just so that you can see how I'm organizing things. I tend to uh, block out props and then I'll put references under them. Uh, pure ref retains the resolution of the images and then all of it is saved as a single file. Those files can get quite large. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I, I essentially just start gathering all my assets and add labels, which is control N you can just type whatever you want. You can change the text color, background color. Uh, and if you need to look, there's, uh, there's a uh, hotkeys next to everything. Um, some, some of the nice things I'll do though, is like by grouping these up, I know what, what is what, oh, are these, so these are parented. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. So those aren't parented anymore. So I can just move this into place. Oh, it's still parented. Why? Oh, weird. Okay. Anyways, so I'm gonna delete that. Let's see if these are parented still. Nope, cool. So, uh, Yes, parenting. It's a strange thing. I think it has to do with like 
If I move this here, these are parented. If I paste with that selected, they retain parent. But if I select, copy, deselect, paste, they're not parented. So if you have it selected, you're pasting into the parent. Just a tip, because <laughs> it's a little strange if you uh, accidentally run into that. Uh, so yeah, I group my assets up and then I usually keep my inspiration and any like text, like these, for example, black market, CNC parlor, las lasers are the language of love, laser tech engraving. Uh, these, these actually came from chat. So I thought those were pretty funny and see if I can find a way to get those into the environment somewhere like CNC parlor, for example, I think is actually, yeah, it's up here. It's actually going to be a shop. Uh, but yeah, I usually just kind of organize these, the resolution of the images is, is retained. I'll just select and scale based on like importance for myself, uh, the things that are more inspiring. And then if they're, they kind of inspire, or I don't want to make, I don't want to have that image imply too much information to me, then I'll, I'll keep them quite small. I really like this one because of the lighting. But uh, yeah, I just kind of organize these. Pure Ref is free. They have a donation process if you want to give them um, a donation. I would suggest it if you use them a lot. But uh, how I end up using Pure Ref, so I've got this all organized, but let's say, let's say I really like something in here, like, uh, like this one. I don't think I have this one in here yet, but I've referenced it a lot in my scene. So you can just click and drag it into the view. And then if you press control and alt left click, you can scale and move around. Really, really nice, really nice uh, tool, pure ref is. Um, yeah, and then I just kind of scroll around, see if I can find some other stuff that I find interesting. See, I've already grabbed this one. Um, dang, these are cool. But yeah, that's essentially what I do with pure ref. There's a, uh, what is it? Alt G. Yeah. If you select an asset or a asset, an image and press alt G, you can grayscale it. Um, some of the other common things I'll use is control, uh, control shift left click and you can rotate and then control or alt shift. You can see it in the bottom there, but it's probably kind of hard to see right now. Alt shift left click to rot, uh, flip and it, you can do it vertical and horizontal. So I get asked a lot about viewport settings and kind of what I do um, to the default viewport when I'm working, just mainly in the layout in, the, uh, in this viewport shading tab. So I'm just gonna go through and explain all of the, the little things that I turn on and the settings that I, I set. Uh, but uh, yeah, so where we're at right now, this is the default lighting setup, default matte caps, all that, no shadows, nothing. See the grid on the ground. Uh, so I'm just going to go through, let's, uh, let's go down the list. So if you can see in this corner, the main reason I'm changing a lot of stuff is, uh, I want to be able to visualize things a lot easier and understand the shapes and where shadows fall and all that. So I'll just, uh, go up here. So the viewport shading settings. So first up, I'll look at the matte caps. Um, so if you click this, I usually sit on uh, either these two or this one. It's pretty rare that I go to the others, but uh, yeah, so you can see with this one, this one's pretty nice because it's more of like a flat, it gives you just a little bit of shade. Uh, this one's nice if you need to see how like the highlight goes across the asset, but it's not too important. You just need to see that definition. And then um, I usually will go to this one if I want like a central like core highlight. I mean, you can kind of, you can see it in these, in these previews, what's going on. This one definitely has some type of a image that's being reflected in it. This one also, uh, I imagine this one's really nice for vehicles or hard surface stuff when you're checking how the geometry is smoothing across the surface. So let's, let's stick to, I'll stick to this one. So we can just really see what's going on. Uh, okay, so we got this view. We've 
switch from studios to matcap and see the difference already. It's pretty nice. You're getting more definition. Um, sides are darker uh, from from the left side. The uh, next thing I do is sometimes you'll see me go to random, which is just showing different colors based on different uh, objects. So all of these are the same object, whereas like this this one is a separate object. So you have two objects here. They'll be randomly given a color. If you rename the object in your scene, it will uh, randomly choose another color. And you'll notice the colors sometimes can be a little similar. So I go between that and object color uh, and material. Now object color, you can see what's going on here is I've got three colors. Like this is the scene color uh, or default object colors. Uh, if you go to uh, this object properties tab, at the bottom here, viewport display, you can choose what the color is of the object. And I've, chose, I've chosen this color for objects that are being instanced from another Blender fire, file, which we'll, I'll show in another video, uh, just to break that down. Um, and then objects that I consider to be, um, will be in the final state of this scene will be unique, that's this color. So one of the nice things is uh, if I put my mouse over this and press control C, if I go to something else and just, just press control V, it will just copy and paste those colors. I don't have to right click or go in here and dupe the hex code or any of that stuff. So it's just copy and paste. And that works for a, a number of things in, in Blender. So keep that in mind. Uh, next up, I want to look at, we're going to just switch this back to material so it's easier to read what's going on. Um, next up, you got your back face calling. You can turn on and off if you want to not see the back of geometry. This is nice if you're doing interiors and you want to be able to hide the walls while you're working. It's called the Sims view, if you will. Um, the outline is the other thing that people notice like right off the bat. Like you can see there's an outline, particularly you'll see it where there's a, like I've split the edge here and made two objects on the ground. And the outline really will highlight that that uh, that effect. And you can really see it in, in this area as well. So if we just toggle this outline on and off. And you can change the color of that as well. Uh, the only other things I really mess with is the cavity, which I, I tend to do both. So first let's look at world and we'll we'll lower these all the way down. So ridge is going to be adding like an edge highlight wherever there's a, it's kind of like a cavity or a convexity map if you, if you want to call it that, um, where it's basically highlighting high points or high tension points, usually edges, hard edges, even, even if it's softer, you'll see it here. So that's kind of a, I would say that's probably one of the downsides of it. So you can control like how far to take that. And if you double click in here, you can, you can go past the max and create, like you can create the new maximum. So if I say 10, that's the new max. And then I can lower it down to whatever whatever I want. So let's just, let's do one for now. Um, valleys or essentially ambient occlusion is this slider. Again, you can type in whatever you want. I usually keep it about 2.5. Now this allows me, this in this view now, I'm seeing a lot more of like how the shapes are interacting with each other where they're, where they meet. Uh, the outline is letting me know where one asset starts and another stops based off of like where they, where they collide with each other. You can see the outline is not just the outside of geometry. It's also where it clips as well with, uh, other assets. So that's, that's really, really handy. Um, now the other setting is screen screens, pretty interesting. So screen has the same ridges and valleys. You'll see that you get really sharp highlights. I don't know if you can see that on, let's just go down here. So you can see on the edge here, you get really sharp highlights and then really sharp, like AO-esque type effects. Usually I keep that down to zero and the ridges I'll turn up just a little bit, maybe to like just one, just so that I'm seeing it. So if you see here, it's adding a little bit of information in there. 
Now with that set to one and world set to one and 2.5, I'll save both. And now I'll have the little highlight and then also the, the faked or screen space AO from the valley settings and world space and the ridge settings. And when you set, when you set it to both, you're seeing both settings visible at the same time, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially it other than shadows. So shadows I covered on the last stream, I think, or maybe it was the stream before, and that's just this toggle button here. Uh, by default, it's kind of hard to read and it's, it's a little hard to control, but I like using it just because it gives me a sense of composition and space and how things are overlapping with each other. Uh, let's just do a rundown of like how this all works. So shadows, I wouldn't ever say put it all the way to one because you get full black in there. There's no uh, bounce information happening in the shadows. There's no lighting information happening in the shadows. So putting this somewhere around maybe like 0.8 is nice because then you see where the shadows are. You understand the silhouettes and the shapes that the shadows are, are making. Uh, but you're not, um, you're not losing the ability to work inside of the shadow, work in the shadows. No, it's, um, so point eight is good. Uh, the other thing is there's a little cog here and probably the best way to give an example of this is to just kind of bring this barrel up. Um, uh, so we've got this barrel selected, or it doesn't have to be selected, but I brought it over here. Um, if we go to shadows, you can shift the shadow, which is kind of odd. I usually, I mean, I guess maybe you want to be able to offset where the shadow is at. Uh, I usually set that to zero and then shadow focus. I think what shadow focus is, cause they're not, do they have a, Shadow factor hardness. Okay. So you have the shading that's happening on the mat cap. And then you also have shading that's happening from the actual shadow. Uh, for the view that we're going for here, like if I just start turning this up, if you go to one, you'll see you're only going to get the shadows from the, uh, from the actual shadow. Like it's excluding the geometries, uh, shading in that sense. Um, I don't like that too much. I mean, in certain stylistic choices, it makes sense. I would say maybe like 0.5, then you get the nice shade and then the shadow as well. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's really where, where I like to have my, my shadows at for this type of viewport. Um, the only other thing is this sphere thing. Uh, this is how you're controlling the direction of the shadow. It's not attached to a light like you might think it would be. Um, one thing I would suggest when you're moving this around is look at what you're moving around or like look at the scene, but then like actually look at the sphere and then look at the scene to see if you're getting what you want. Cause if you look at the scene and then just start moving around, you'll feel like, uh, you'll get a sense that it's not behaving how you're expecting it to. Uh, the other thing to think about is the white spot would be where the sun is coming from. So like if it was 50% like this, this would almost be like high noon. So the sun's directly above you. So if you bring that down and then just rotate it around, you can uh, just start trying to search for where those shadows are going to be. It's a little clunky. I would like it if there was a, an easier way to uh, control this, but it's all right. It's just for the viewport so that you can understand what you're looking at. It's not like your final lighting or anything, but um, yeah. So that's, that's essentially what I'm doing with the viewport. Sometimes you'll see me go over. So Sam over here, you can see this is nice because I can understand what's in shadow. And uh, if we do random or object color, I can see what's instanced and what will be unique and yeah that's that's my viewport shading that's basically it for the recap video i'll make sure to uh do these more um i think that we can bring a lot more value to the youtube channel by having this more like a more condensed version instead of the two hour clips uh essentially every time that there's something that i feel like oh man we should 
that should be covered. It'll be part of the recap. So basically I'll show you where the scene is at, any like big learnings we've made, and then show you anything that, uh, that I felt like should be shown in the, in the recap video. But uh, yeah, hopefully these are helpful. And um, if you have anything you want me to cover in these, I can add them to the to the video and like make little quick, quick clips on the ends of the update to just be like, this is how you do this or this is how I set this up or anything like that. Just uh, just leave it in the comments below. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.